Hi guys, this is Joshua from Multibound, and today we're gonna be talking about EXTREME! Hi guys, uh, this is Josh from Multiball 9 Instructors and today in Extreme Math we're going to talk about a very particular exercise. It says, a letter sized sheet of white paper 8.5 inches times 11 inches is folded in a way that corner A, corner A touches the opposite side at point E and the folded portion is called a crease. Now, the exercise wants the minimum length of the crease C. And because of the length of this exercise, I'm going to divide it into two parts. And because of the beauty of this exercise, I'm going to be able to show you different methods to solve this exercise. And in today's method, it's called the Pythagorean method. So for part one, part one, I'm going to solve the... the primary equation, and in part two, I'm going to find the derivative of it. So, let's go to this diagram, which is more elaborate. In this diagram, I structure it so I can, so I can label each length with a different variable. So, for example, from D to A is Y, from B to A is X, from F to B is 8.5 minus X, from E to F is Z, from G to E is Y minus Z, and from E to D again is Y. Now, notice this green line. The purpose of this green, green line is to create another triangle from the point where the crease starts. So there's this extra length that I'm not going to use for this exercise. Now let's start with the Pythagorean uh, theorem. Now. The Pythagorean theorem for the blue triangle is what? Is x squared plus y squared equals c squared. Now, notice that c is the, the length that I want to minimize, but we have two different variables, so we need a secondary equation. And to be able to find this secondary equation, I'm going to use the other thing, uh, triangles. So for this triangle, we have z squared plus 8.5 minus x squared equals x squared. And for this one, with the green line, is y minus z squared plus 8.5 squared equals y squared. Now these two uh, equations are going to give me the primary equation, uh, are going to give me the secondary equation to substitute in the primary equation. Now let's start with the top one. So z squared plus 8.5 squared is 72.25 minus 2 times 8.5 is 17x plus x squared equals x squared. Now x squared is canceled, so we have that c squared is equal to 17x minus 72.25. So this implies what? That z is equal to the square root of this term. And a positive, right? Because it's a length. Okay, now, now that we have z and z squared, Let's use this other equation. If we expand this, we get y squared minus 2yz plus z squared plus 72.25 equals y squared. Now, what is z and what is z squared? Well, we already have these terms right here. So let's substitute y squared minus 2yz, which is the square root of 70x minus 72.25 plus, let's go move this a little bit to the right, plus z squared, which is this term squared, right? So it's going to be 17x 
minus 72.25 plus 72.25 equals y squared. Now this y squared and this y squared cancel. This minus 72.25 plus this 72.25 cancel. So what we only have what left? We have this term, which is minus 2y, and the square root, 17x minus 72.25 plus 17x equal to 0. So what does y mean? Y is then, well, we divide this term by this one. So we have y equal to 17x divided by 2 square root 17x minus 72.25, which is what? Well, 17 divided by 2, we go back to 8.5x divided by the square root of 17x minus 72.25. So this is y. So this is the y that we need to substitute in our primary equation, right? So this implies that c squared equals x squared plus y squared. But what is y? y is 8.5 divided by the square root of 17x minus 72.25. So let's write that. Now, what is this squared? Well, this is equal to what? Well, x squared plus 72.25 divided by what? Well, we cancel the square root. Now, finding the common denominator of this will be this term. Multiplying by 17x, will give me what? 17x cubed minus I think I left, oh yep I left this x so this x goes here so this is gonna be x squared so minus 17x And I left something else, right? No? Oh, sorry. Minus 72.25x squared plus x squared 72.25 divided by 17x minus 72.25. What is which is equal to what? Well, if you, these two cancel, so I have 17x cubed divided by 17x minus 72.25. If we simplify this, this becomes what? 8.5x cubed divided by 8, uh, 2x minus 8.5. And this is our c of x. c squared, sorry. So c squared equals 8.5x cubed 2x minus 8.5, which in terms implies that c of x, the crease in term of x, is the square root of 8.5x cubed over 2x minus 8.5. Now it's very important that I stop here and show you something about x. What is the domain of x? What, what are the values that x can be? Well clearly here I see that x can be what? Well this can be 0, so in, this implies that 2x 
minus 8.5 can be 0, right? So this implies that x can be 8.5 over 2, which is 4.25. Now, x can be 2.5. Can it be less than that? Well, if, if it's less, in the numerator, it's going to be positive, but in the denominator, it's going to be negative. And we are inside a square root, so the domain of this square root has to be bigger than 4.25. And the domain of x, or the feasible domain of x, is what? Well, 4.25, strictly less than x, and the maximum length, which is 8.25. And I'm going to stop here, and for the next part, I'm going to show you to find the minimum.